Supreme Master Ching Hai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit www.godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. Make sure that your environment is hygienic, yeah, and clean. I love cleanliness and tidiness. I am not a messy guru. I'm sorry. I can't bear it. Hmm? Have you ever seen me looking sloppy? No. Even I'm very busy, huh? I don't mean you have to put makeup on. This is extra, okay? But I don't look sloppy, and my environment's always clean. I can't bear the, the you know. Untidiness, but you must develop. You must develop and improve in all aspects, not only one aspect. It is so terrible when you live in a dirty and messy environment, don't you think? Huh? It affects your mood, no? Yeah? It, it will, huh? It does. Even though sometimes you probably take it for granted and get used to it because there's nothing you can do, everybody else around is so messy. So you get used to it, but then you will wonder why you're always in a bad mood, you know? And you don't want to talk to no one, and you don't want to say hello to anybody, and you don't even want to walk out of your door, just because surrounding is very messy. Nobody likes to live in a messy place. Even the pig, you know? You know the pigs? Uh, they love dry and clean place. People say pigs are very dirty. It's not always true. If you raise some pigs as pets, and people do now, they have all kind of pets now. And uh, if you put them in a dirty place, and if you have some dry place in the corner, he will immediately go to that dry and newly layered you know, place to lay down. He will not prefer to stay in a wet and dirty place. Truly, truly, man is uh, very, very noble in the creation, but sometimes, if we are not careful, we slide out uh, in the bottom of the scale without knowing, yeah? And letting it be, permitting it to happen to us, because we are engulfed, perhaps, or affected by the environmental people and environment um, circumstances, and we let it be. We let it be. We don't fight back. We don't check inside and we do not uh, try to overcome the problem. Okay, that's it, that's enough now. I'm telling you a very nice story, okay? You want to hear? Yeah. This story is called um, a king with a lot of desires. Long, 
long, long, long, long time ago. <laughs> you know, <laughs> ah, very, very, very long ago, there was a king who ruled a very great kingdom, and for a very, 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 very long time, and India. And during that time, <laughs> he is always victorious. <laughs> he never loses anything. He always wins. <laughs> so he became very, very, very greedy. Yes. And very arrogant. Because everything he did brought victory to him. So this king, huh? It's a kind of uh, so-called practitioner king. Huh? He has magical power. There are many kings in the old time. We call them the, um, the golden wheel saint king or something like that because he has a kind of carriage, yeah, golden carriage, which can carry him anywhere he wants, perhaps a UFO. Perhaps it was UFO, yeah. Yeah, when you read many stories in, in India, like Rama, it seems like in the old time people get in touch with the UFO people, extraterrestrial. Yeah, we'd fly with a chariot on the sky. So what else then? We didn't have any airplane that time, did we? I don't think so. Huh? Or perhaps we did. Mm. And besides, with all this magical power, it must be the extraterrestrial people that they have encountered. You know, Rama and his wife and the company. Hmm. And of course, look here, he has so many beautiful things. He has seven things. Seven. Oh. Uh, seven. Yeah. <laughs> In China, this means seven. <laughs> yes. And this means six. <laughs> okay. Five and one. <laughs> He has seven uh, precious things uh, in his life. One, the number, uh, the first one is a very beautiful, strong, magical horse, which can uh, carry him one thousand miles an hour. It must be aeroplane. Huh? <laughs> what kind of horse is that? Ah, but it's red one. Mm. And then he has a beautiful white, like snow. Elephant, and then he has a precious stone that's in the evening, uh, you know, emits beautiful light, like the moonlight. So they don't have electricity; they don't need to. Yeah. And then he has a car, like carriage, and golden. And then this one can fly him up to the sky. In India, all time. What could that be? Ah, airplane or UFO. Do we have a car that uh, goes a thousand miles a day? Okay, that must be the car. He has a car and an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> and also he has a beautiful queen who is very, very beautiful as well as very, very faithful. So what else does he want? Hmm? He has a very good prime minister to help him, and he has a very, very powerful army general. So he has everything, right? No wonder he always has been victorious. Mm. Besides, <laughs> I saw it here. He has thousands of princes. Whew. <laughs> Big, tall, strong, intelligent, educated. Courageous, all like a lion king. <laughs> wow, my God. Do you want all this? No? Why not? <laughs> well, it doesn't cost you anything. All these things actually should have made him very, very happy and satisfied. But he was not. Perhaps he's still not. Mm. So every day he's feeling empty, you know, feeling like he has... Uh, Miss something, uh, perhaps he's not initiated, that's why, don't you think? Huh? Otherwise, what else does he want? Huh? If we have all this, we will be happy already. He always feels like he's lacking something, and never enough for him. Mm. One day he was fed up. 
They feel we don't have enough money <laughs> with all that. So you sit there, meditate on money. Mm. <laughs> Just like some of you do. Mm. Oh, a noodle, perhaps you meditate on noodles. <laughs> now he meditate on money, and he recite the mantra for money, you know, he say, dollar, 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 dollar. <laughs> American dollar, France dollar, Italian dollars, <laughs> German Deutschmark, <laughs> etc., etc. He recite all this mantra, and then and then all the money runs down, all the Deutsche Marks, all the <laughs> American dollars, French, France. I know that, you know, all the Japanese yen, Japanese yen, 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 yen. Instead of zen zen, he's a yen, yen. <laughs> so anyhow, his meditation was powerful. He was very, very concentrated and very sincere. He was very devoted to money. So the god of money was very moved and rained down the money for him. And then he saw all that. The whole palace and outside, you know, all over the tree stop and everywhere is money. Even next to the toilets there were money too. <laughs> but he looked, 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 and then he told people to pick him up and come for him, and he said, not enough. And then he meditated again. Now he wants something else. Now he recites a different mantra. I can teach you right now. Go, 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 silver, 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 go, go, silver, silver, go, 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 silver. <laughs> and then again, as he was absolutely, 100% devoted, the god of gold and silver was very moved and rained down all the gold and silver as he desired. Okay. And, and this time, the gold and silver cover all Meli and the surrounding. <laughs> so all he has to do was telling his disabled to go out <laughs> and pick him up and bring him into the storeroom and buy some cookies and cakes <laughs> in case some of the disabled come. <laughs> all right, that was his story, not ours, no, nothing to do with it. Okay, and he was satisfied for... Oh, wow. Yeah, maybe a few days or a few months. Actually, in the old time, people live a very long life. Perhaps that's why he's bored. Mm. You see? See? So make sure you don't live too long. <laughs> I told you already the story about forever young, did I not? Okay, that, that should be your lesson. So many, many years passed now, yeah? after the incident of silver and gold. The king happened to be bored again, dissatisfied with life. He was perhaps in the middle kingdom. And then he looked to the south and he saw that it was a very prosperous country and very big and beautiful. So he said, ah, I wish I also can rule over that southern kingdom. Then I would be happy and satisfied. Ah. Huh? Then suddenly, when he wished like that, his chariot fly up into the sky and brought him right there to the southern kingdom. Now, he won immediately, because when everybody saw him come with such a beautiful golden and bright chariot from the sky, they all kneel down on the floor, yeah, and say, hello, <laughs> offer surrender to him, no problem. Mm. And then they treated him very, very good and very, very um, respectful and did everything he wanted, so no problem. And then uh, he stayed there for a thousand more years. Uh, in the old time, you live very long. If you want to, you can reseat yourself uh, to the olden time <laughs> and stay very long. <laughs> <laughs> and then he was bored. And then he go up to the high tower, and Pepsi looked to the north. And then he saw the north, and he said, Oh, that's a very nice kingdom, very prosperous, people very good looking. Now I want that kingdom. <laughs> then I will be happy and satisfied. As soon as he has spoken, because he has the power perhaps of magic, so whatever he wishes come true. 
Perhaps he has the merit for a long time, have not spent it. So he wished, and then the chariot also fly him up into the sky and delivered him to the north. As soon as he came, all the people in the northern kingdom also knew on the street and give him incense, flour and fruit and cakes and candies and mineral water and everything, and uh, offer the kingdom to him and surrender. So no problem. He has not wasted one drop of blood. And then he obtained the kingdom. I think the people who are fighting right now should come and learn the strategy with him, how to invade another nation without spending any blood or human lives. Okay, so now he was very happy, satisfied for another thousand years. It doesn't take much for him to be satisfied, does it? Huh? So one thousand years passed now, and the dissatisfied king look over uh, perhaps the east and saw so, hmm? <laughs> eh? another kingdom there. <laughs> he used his binoculars, <laughs> perhaps. And he looked at there and said, Oh, oh, how come? <laughs> How come there's a kingdom there I did not know? And it's very beautiful, very prosperous, a lot of durian fruit smell <laughs> from there up to here. <laughs> so he said, I have to have that kingdom. I have to rule over that kingdom also included so that I will be satisfied. Said and done, as usual. Okay, he won without blood, without any resistance. Perhaps because... God has favored him, perhaps because he has done a great deal of a marriage in the last lives, yeah? perhaps because those people in the, the north, the south, and the east were very peaceful, loving people. Yeah? Whoever ruled the kingdom doesn't matter. They don't want to make bloodshed. They just surrender. Perhaps it's the best way. Perhaps it is the best way in every situation. Because one cannot fight without resistance, right? So perhaps, maybe we shouldn't fight at all, anywhere. Truly, if we understand the kingdom of God is within us, and if we have already tasted the nectar of this kingdom of God, then probably we do not want to resist anything. If we may live here longer to serve God and fellow beings, let it be so. If we uh, have to go because our time has come or because someone else wants to terminate our life, well, let it be, because we have other kingdom to continue to live. Perhaps, therefore, um, surrendering to God's will is the best. Sooner or later, each one of us must leave this world anyhow. So why complicated things? I see many resistance in different countries. <sighs> Sometimes it's make more and more and more bloodshed all the time without having any concrete and finished result. It just costs a lot of lives, time and a building uh, energy, constructing power, and financial benefit cost a lot from the people. <sighs> Besides, as you see, every system will collapse itself. See that? Nothing lasts forever if it doesn't suit uh, the, the plan of God. But I think everything will take care of themselves. Hmm? Sometimes, in the course of life, you have experienced that yourself, no? Hmm? Sometimes you try to, to demand for this and that, and then you end up like the same, <laughs> sometimes worse than before. <laughs> so now, another thousand years come. Ah, he was happy. He swallowed up one nation and be very happy. <laughs> and then so one or more thousand years, and he was fed up again, was poor. And he went up to the top of the mountain, used his binoculars, Oh, telescope, yes. And he looked over the west. Now he saw America, perhaps. <laughs> Before Columbus discovered it, he had seen it. <laughs> he said, uh-uh, 
That land, very big and beautiful. Miami Beach, <laughs> California, good weather. <laughs> ah, West Virginia snow, oh, we have everything. I must have that land, yes. So, said, wished, and accomplished, as usual, okay? As uh, many times before. So he uh, besieged the Western country, and they're happy with it. So a thousand years more, and he's uh, bored, <laughs> unhappy. You see the problem with having no master? Eh? If you don't have a living teacher, it's very difficult. <laughs> Every guru will tell you that, but if you don't understand, it's your problem. Mm. <laughs> Now, because he doesn't have a master who taught him uh, the ephemeral nature of uh, human lives, doesn't matter how many thousand years you live. Still, one day it must end, and nothing here you can take with you, and nothing physical will ever, ever satisfy you forever and every day of your life. Satisfaction comes only from inside. And if you seek anything else except satisfaction from inside, you will always end up frustrated, you know, and miserable. Every time you try, Every time, like you knock the wall and you have to return and rethink and redo, uh, reshape your action again. Even love and children, husband, wives, anything that you think that brings you the most beautiful feeling of human life, still it never lasts. Today is good, tomorrow it brings you heartache and problems and the consequences and all kinds of sorrow and worries takes a lot of effort to keep somebody you love. And it takes a lot of effort to keep somebody who loves you. You know, any little move, <laughs> any little so-called wrong move or insensitive move break the relationship immediately and sometimes irreparably. So every effort we spend in this world to repair our friendship, to build up the kingdom on earth. Everything brings us always trouble and trouble. Even though we're successful at the end, you know, or sometimes in between. Still, it, it takes us all the energy and time and youth and attention in order to keep that alive. Doesn't matter what kind of relationship or what kind of treasure that is. You have experience? If you don't, you may try. Go and fall in love somewhere and then tell me what happened. <laughs> you look younger in these few days. You look better. You know the skin? When you stay here a few more days, a few days after, you look different than the first day you came. I noticed many of you like that. It's really happened many times. After a really good meditation session, You stand up like a saint and nobody dare touch you. If you really have a good meditation and sincerely practice, people smell that and feel that. And they have nothing for you but reverence and love. And you have nothing at all written on your face except love and purity. And that I can see very, very clearly, like reading a book. You, you notice people? Do you take notice? Yeah? Those who meditate a great deal and sincerely practice, you see that change? Yeah? That's why when you come here, you must, you should. You ought to meditate all the time, whenever you can. Not only sitting there meditating, but in your mind, you must concentrate. Don't find friends and idle gossiping uh, everywhere, even if I don't see you. Even if I don't see you then, but when I see you, I see Other people see, it's written on your face very, very clearly. I tell you from all honesty of my heart. Yeah? There is nothing you can hide. Nothing at all. It's written on your face, in your eyes, on your forehead. It smells around your body. It doesn't matter what kind of perfume you spray. <laughs> ah, no difference. Yeah, really. Really. Yeah? So very precious, the meditation and the time here when you are so free. Even if you work a little bit or you engage in something here and there, but you're free mentally, you're not burdened and pressured. So take care, 
take the opportunity to practice. Okay, we come back to India again. <laughs> after running around the world, the king was born after 4,000 years of uh, invading the four corners of the world. Now he's bored to death because he has nothing to play anymore. All the countries he has conquered, he know by name and all the games in the country, all the beautiful women he saw, everything he know. Now he's bored with the earth, nothing to do. When I he sat there, he can't meditate on money either because he's fed up, he has enough. He can't meditate on anything else because everything on the world belongs to him. So he sat there. Now he think of God. He meditate on God. Haha. <laughs> Finally, my God, do you believe that? <laughs> but he actually did meditate on God. Finally, and then he was thinking, "Oh, I wish I could see God. How I long to see God. If I could just see God, it would be God, beautiful. <laughs> oh God, how can I see God? Okay." And then suddenly. Oh, as he wished, his dream comes true. God, moved by his desire, sincerity desire, perhaps materialism desire, and invited him to the kingdom. Perhaps the god of astral world, yeah, or oh, Vishnu god or Shiva god. We don't even know what kind of god that was. Well, by the weight of his thinking, perhaps he end up in the astral kingdom, right? <laughs> because it's so materialistic, his wish. Not that he wanted to see God for reverence or for longing in his heart, but he wanted to see God because he desired to see the kingdom of God. He wanted to see whether the kingdom of God has any differences from his kingdom and anything else he can learn, he can look at, he can play with, etc. Just pure materialistic curiosity. But God is very generous and uh, loving. But anyhow, God, yeah, anyone who meditate on Him attain His attention. So that is God. Okay, He was anyhow compassionate, loving, even though He's only an astral God. Because astral God is also the representative of the highest God. Anyhow, so He has some quality of the Almighty. Now, very lovingly, cautiously. Hospitally, he invited the king and company to come to the kingdom of God, and then his chariot took him into the sky and up into the kingdom of God to the throne of the deity. Oh, and then the God, whatever kingdom that may be, astro, intellectual, akashic, body God, invited him sit next to him. Yeah, he has a very long sofa, you know, made of gold and studded with diamonds and precious stone, glittering like the sun in the morning. Mm. So he invited him sit next to him, even very, very cautious God, huh? Very, very polite, very hospitable, and then offered him all kind of biscuits and candies and grapes, <laughs> apples, anything. That is available in the kingdom of God. He's offered to him, and as well as offered to his uh, company, yeah, horses and elephant and queen and uh, chariot manager and soldiers and uh, general and minister and everything that he brought up. And then God was talking, chatting to him in a very friendly way. And then our king, you know, the one has never satisfied, sat there talking to God. But at the same time, watching around. Wow, the lamb, the nail lamb is made of diamond. Wow, and that lamb is made of ruby. Oh, the other one is made of pearl. And anything here is more precious and beautiful than anything we have on earth. Even diamond are different. Gold are different. Silver are different. It seems to be a thousand times more beautiful and more real and more precious and more pleasing to the eyes and, of course, to the heart of the king. <laughs> and now he's up there <clears throat> and thinking. <laughs> First, he was trying to think with his soul. <laughs> But then that doesn't have any wisdom. 
because the seventh chakra, you know, he traveled from the soul up to the knees. And when he was looking, he think with the soul. And then later he think with the knees, and then he tried to think with the solar plexus, and then he tried to reason with the heart. It doesn't work. And then he tried to reason with the throat. It doesn't work either. But that's all he can come up. Because he wants to swallow everything. So the most concentrated chakra <laughs> for him is the throat center. <laughs> he wants to eat anything that he saw. He wants to swallow, possess everything that he ever let eye on. So now he was thinking. And when he comes up to the throat, <clears throat> he wants to swallow the kingdom of God. Now he said, wow, this is very beautiful. What if I get rid of this old man and then become a king? <laughs> uh huh. So he was sit there and thinking like that with his throat. Hmm. And now, because the uh, God King is a uh, God, yeah, doesn't matter lower God or higher God, he's still God. So while the King was thinking with his throat center, his apple keep coming up and down. So the God saw it. <laughs> when he saw his throat center activated, then he know, uh uh. And then he kept looking with his wisdom eye into the throat center and he saw, uh uh, oh, black market going on there. <laughs> All kind of criminal records are written there. So God knows what's going on in this king's mind. But pretending not to know anything, he didn't say anything. I try to be even more pleasant, more friendly, and offer more things. After that, uh, God just tried to, to tell the king that, uh, okay, uh, I am busy. I have initiation going on in the back mountain, and 500 uh, disciples <laughs> in the front mountain, and uh, five or six construction sites going on. So would you please excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> And say Yonara. <laughs> and the man, yeah, was very, very uh, desirous to stay in the kingdom of God, the king. But then the God king makes him know that he must go. And then when he tried to stay there longer, many of the guardians' angel with the eyes as big as the sun and so shining, staring at him, say nothing. He said to him, either you go voluntarily and soon, <laughs> or you go involuntarily and soon. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, the king saw, you know, he has only a handful of generals and armies and a small chariot, so, and all these guardians, angels, you know, with very big uh, umbrellas and <laughs> with powerful eyes and arms and... Yeah, so he better move. So he had to move. He went back to the earth again. And since that day, God doesn't favor him anymore. So he began to be ill, sick, and uh, very suffering a lot. And then he would die. Before he died, he called his ministers and uh, other officers come to his dead bed and say, he was very sorry now, very sorry, because he know why he died. He know God punished him. God withdraw eternal happiness from him, or eternal life force from him, and now grant him a big favor, his death sentence. <laughs> So he was very sorry and very repentant. He called his ministers to his side and say, Well, after I die, if anybody asks you why I die, you tell him because of greed. And that's it. And he closed his eyes and meditate forever in the grave. Hmm. Goodbye. Finished. See, we could be materialistic practitioners as well. This story serves to remind us that even though we follow a so-called spiritual practice path, we must 
check out all the time. We must be sure that we don't follow materialistic spiritualism. Yes, they call that. Because we follow a path in order to gain more power, and then we can control others. Or we can take things from the universe, for, from other people, without knowing ever satisfaction. This is the same path with the magical power and all kind of this materialistic practicing. Even though you follow a righteous path, you must always check yourself, make sure that we don't follow it for some personal, uh, you know, material gain and loss and fame and name and all kind of these things. Sometimes you don't know it, but you do follow materialistic spiritualism. For example, you come here, or you come to a master anywhere, expecting that uh, she or he heal you of your sickness, because you don't want to go see doctor, because you think you have the right to demand such thing. But you want to be richer and then more powerful in some way, and then you expect the master to fulfill your wish in such a way. And this is no good. Even if you practice Kuan Yin Method, you follow the spiritual discipline and you meditate, but your mind is not pure of the material need, you know, of the material overdose needing, then it's no good. Of course, when you're in trouble, you are bound to ask for help, you know, like, look, I... I don't have a job now, I need to pay the rent and all that. Master, can you help me to find a job? And that is a different. When you need, you may ask. But when it is not necessary, if the people come to initiation expecting that after that, and she will have this and that and others, uh, material gain or more a position in the society, etc., etc., we should better not come to any master expecting such things because we be bound to feel very disappointed. Or even if we are not disappointed, even the Master might grant us our wish, but then the more we want, the less we are satisfied. And then we keep wanting, 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 until no end. And then our attention, our energy, always focus on this material aim, and we forget the almighty power inside. After we attain the Almighty power, anything will come to us when necessary, without asking. But we don't come for that. We don't come for material fulfillment or any other, even uh, magical power. These are astral desires. Yeah? Also material, in a subtle sense. Not that you wish for money, <laughs> then it is a... Uh, a material, but if you wish for magical power or any kind of control over other people or weather or surrounding, these are also material wish, and these are even worse. Like business people, we go to do business and we want to gain money and all that kind of things. We should practice for the sake of wisdom alone, all right? For the sake of knowing ourselves, for the sake of knowing the origin of our home and to be free and happy. That's all there is, okay? And everything else, come or not come, just um, by the way. You know already. (laughs) So we have to always check up, okay? Yeah, we're about to make mistakes, but we have to check and correct it. Good night, really good night. Mm -hmm.
everyone should lead a normal life according to uh, whatever she or he wished to do. That's the best way to make you happy. Yeah, and uh, you practice meditation in uh, the meantime, and that's very good. So I think regardless of the race of humankind, if anywhere we go, we represent virtues, beauty and truth, people will always feel attracted to us. When someone is around, a teacher or someone, you know, he always tend to silently absorb some of the invisible influence, yes. And that is more important than the verbal instruction. When we practice quantum method, sometimes our shape change. Some fat people become smaller, some small, you know, skinny people become rounder. You know, not fat, but more filled. Yeah, there's many things like this happen. And sometimes happen right after initiation. He looks totally different, like another person, more lovable, yes, and more near, you know, like a friend, long-time friend. It's very funny, I, I notice many times. So sometimes people think, how come Master don't know me? Yeah, I just come to say hello to her a few days ago, and now it looks like she doesn't remember. I do remember, but just different person. <laughs> you change. The chemical substance in the body change too. We renew our tissues, renew our cells, and our structure of thinking <laughs> become different, even though you might not notice, because here you don't have the opportunity to use it. But when you go home, or if it, the opportunity arises for you to solve the same problem, you will see so much fresh ideas have developed overnight, kind of overnight, and then you, you know what happened to yourself. Hmm? All right. My good friends, <laughs> continue uh, your vacation at home, in here, <laughs> and don't feel attached to this place, yeah? Because every place is God's place. Every place there is a master. Every place you walk by, that's the place where the master walks by. There's nowhere that the master is not, because the master is within yourself. The master is yourself, finally. So you must have this conviction and this concept of a higher thinking, and then you bring yourself uh, in heaven anytime. <laughs> All right? We cannot always be together. That's impossible, even though uh, it can be done. It can be done. Maybe when I have a stable place, yeah? Then you can come and stay here, yeah? After you have polished yourself by many uh, rough, chiseling, you know, in the world, with the best scripture of the universe, and then you become more mellow, yeah, with age and wisdom. And then we may be able to stay together a very, very long time. If not here, then in heaven. All right? I wish you a safe journey home. See you. See you around. Supreme Master Ching Hai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit www.godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. Be vegan. Make peace. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com. <laughs>